So thank you for joining us tonight. This is a webinar on NeuroTracker X, the uh, new software platform uh, and the implementation for clinicians. Um, myself, I'm Christina Epifano with uh, NeuroTracker. Been with the company for a few years now, and I'm happy to uh, co-host tonight with one of our um, very awesome clients, Katie Mitchell, um, who's the founder of Thrive Neurosport. And I've been working with Katie for a little less than a year. And it's a pretty interesting story how we launched a brand new platform in the middle of a pandemic. And Katie actually started her own uh, company and she's also doing her uh, PhD at the time. Um, so we're so happy to have her here. Um, we're just gonna go through tonight the introduction about NeuroTracker and the technology, some of our research. Uh, the new NeuroTracker X platform that we launched in March. Um, and Katie will speak on implementing a hybrid and virtual model since COVID. And we'll give also a case example and some bill billing guidelines as well. And then we'll leave it open for some uh, Q&As at the end. And um, we'll have both of our contact information uh, available as well. Um, tonight as well, anybody that is interested in purchasing the NeuroTracker system or wants more information, we've developed a uh, referral code for Katie. So all the um, clients would receive 10% off and also a month worth of NeuroTracker licenses. And for any customers that have already upgraded and want to refer a clinician to NeuroTracker, um, they would in, both receive uh, one month as well of NeuroTracker licenses. So just to give you a little bit of an overview on NeuroTracker, it's a 3D multiple object tracking task that's been developed from over 25 years of research right here at the Université de Montréal by Dr. Jocelyn Faubert. And NeuroTracker uses a patented speed adjustment system to ensure the training is always set at the optimal level of difficulty for the user. So it's a staircase model, meaning that when a patient or client is using NeuroTracker, it's going to adapt to the user. When they identify the targets correctly, it's going to automatically speed up. And if they get it incorrect, it will automatically slow down. So because of this individualized approach and training, NeuroTracker is recognized as the most widely validated cognitive technology on the market. And there's several aspects of the technology that make it a unique functionality relevant to rehabilitation and performance. It uses a 3D training environment and the evidence of transfer is within two to three hours of distributed training. So a NeuroTracker session typically lasts about five to six minutes long and in as little as 30 sessions, so two to three hours, you can start seeing the transformation in, uh, in real world. There's a wide field of view that we look at as well, stimulating peripheral vision and improving the efficiency of visual processing. There's also adaptive speed thresholds that stay within the zone of proximal development. So the NeuroTracker system trains your attention, your working memory, your executive function, just to name a few in over in less than three um, hours of training. And our new NeuroTracker X platform. So NeuroTracker um, has been around for over 10 years, commercialized and began over 10 years ago, first for Manchester United as a performance tool. And over the past two years, we have developed a new platform that is 100% virtual that allows clinicians to be able to monitor their clients and patients remotely from the comfort of their own home. Um, and it allows you as well to be able to go instead of having one screen where the patient comes to you in a clinic model, now they can do NeuroTracker from anywhere around the world. So they do not have to be coming into your facility and be within a certain radius from you. You can um, access all the dashboards and training and assign them programs with the advanced training and customize all that remotely. And I'm going to switch it over now to Katie. I'd love to introduce her. Uh, for those of you that don't know her, like I said, she is uh, the owner of Thrive Neurosport, physiotherapist, and also doing her PhD. And uh, she's going to talk to you a little bit about how uh, she's used this uh, tool in her practice. Awesome. Thanks so much, Christina. I appreciate the introduction. Um, 
I recognize a few names on here uh, through my education platform of people I've been working with in the past, but uh, I'm happy to uh, kind of virtually engage with some new uh, colleagues as well. So it's great to see a lot of you on this call. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of um, <laughs> sort of launched my practice in the pandemic, as uh, Christina mentioned. I, I've been a practicing um, physiotherapist and athletic therapist for a few years now, um, but finally kind of stepped up and started my own practice of somewhat of similar to what, uh, you know, she's already outlined with some of the uh, sort of brain training aspects of NeuroTracker, um, where I was doing a lot of research with my PhD for the past five years. That included uh, looking into perception action integration and looking at how kind of like different kind of clinical conditions such as concussion can affect those processes. So um, my practice is finally kind of connecting my research uh, into what I provide for my patients. So um, something like this for me was really important, especially kind of launching a practice during a pandemic was this hybrid model of care. Uh, and so I kind of look at this blend of, you know, in-person care and virtual care. Uh, so I have some patients who are entirely virtual or telehealth physiotherapy. Um, and some patients who are in person, but then also seek some virtual services. So you kind of have this mix now of uh, patients who, um, or perhaps maybe they've just been seeing me for a long time, and then we can kind of approach this hybrid style. So um, what I wanted to propose a question to you all is if you are providing telehealth or recently just kind of started, um, do you have remote training options available for your patients and clients? Um, or all your services primarily in person, and then you just offered telehealth kind of in the pandemic, like many of us did. Um, you know, I had to build this out through the last year to try and figure out ways to better provide um, care for my patients. So if, if you previously did offer it, um, I'm curious of what kind of things people uh, did perhaps even prior to the pandemic, if you were doing telehealth, what kinds of things you offered. Um, or if you just started, do you have anything to kind of back up what you do in telehealth? Uh, so that can be something that is tricky, especially when we had to pivot a lot of us and figure out how we were going to implement virtual services in the last year. Um, so that is something that I've been, again, like kind of working towards and building up to. Um, and you can see in the photo here, this is actually, uh, we were just doing some some fun stuff at home in our little gym. So uh, we were playing with some NeuroTracker X um, trials with some stick handling and some different, different options. So this is kind of just how like a patient could set it up at home. Um, you know, I have it set up on like an HDMI onto a bigger screen, which is a lot more versatile uh, for the patient to, again, kind of do tailor their programming of like what they can really do with it and optimize the accessibility to it. Um, so you can move on to the next slide there. So this is a photo of me here wearing the glasses. I have a small face. I actually have the glasses right here. Uh, so I have set up several people now. Uh, I've done both in-person and virtual um, where I've literally not made any in-person contact with patients. So um, I'm located kind of in Kitchener-Waterloo area. And I've set up patients in Niagara area, Toronto, um, and I've just shipped uh, like glasses. So they come in this little box um, and I've done like Canada posts and just sent them to patients. And then I have an appointment that uh, I do an assessment. So I make sure that it's actually appropriate for them to use. And we also set up some other programming, uh, but we onboard the NeuroTracker like right on a call like this. Um, so it's just down there, they share their screen or we have kind of two, two uh, uh, devices going where I can see the screen. And I've set people up, uh, whether they were athletes or even concussion patients. Um, so it's, it's a really interesting tool, as Christina mentioned earlier, that you can kind of just sort of broaden your reach uh, and, you know, reach sort of like even just kind of building a business plan. You know, traditionally we look at this sort of maybe 10 to 15 kilometer radius around our clinic because we want to look at convenience. Um, however, now what convenience looks like is way broader than that. And we're looking at across provinces and states, et cetera. Um, so wherever you're, you know, uh, registered to practice, you can reach anybody in your region. So um, it just really, again, extends not only the accessibility of services to the patient, but sort of the accessibility of like what you can provide and diversifying what your business model looks like. Um, and it's, 
like I said, anything, they can set it up on any screen. So like I've been using my, my laptop and, and again, using an HDMI cord. Um, some uh, patients of mine have used on like a desktop, anything that's a, I think a screen greater than about 15 inches, I believe Christina, is the uh, recommended size. Yeah. Um, but not yet on tablets, I believe. So yeah, um, not yet. Yeah, so it's, it's, like I said, the way you can set it up in clinic, instead of having being restricted to kind of the previous model of being on one television, you could have like each almost different treatment rooms with even, like there's just a lot more accessibility to how you even set it up in your practice rather than one standalone system. Um, and also with the software, I'm a big fan of having digital products because, you know, there's no kind of depreciation of that. There's only going to be updates and things that occur with the software um, and then like support and all those things have been really fantastic as well um, with the NeuroTracker team.